Rub up your engines! Red Blogger says, Scotty, is Costco gasoline okay? All gasoline sold in the United States are perfectly fine. As I've said many times, most areas have only one refinery. So one company like Shell makes all the gasoline. And then the other companies like ExxonMobil, whoever, they buy the gasoline in that area from that company. Then they put a dye in to make it the color of their gasoline and put whatever additives they're supposed to put in to make it their gasoline with their additives. But the base, the majority of the gasoline that you're buying comes from one place anyways. And places like Costco, Costco, they're just buying it on the spot market from different companies depending on who's got a lower price <laughs> and since most are most area are made by one company it really doesn't matter all that much Anthony Giles Scotty love your show I got an 08 Honda Accord the guys at my local shop over torqued the drain plug in my oil pan now it won't come off and they won't call me back well they sound like a bunch of morons to me they aren't very good mechanics first of all they shouldn't have made it too tight and second of all you can always get them off what I do, if I get an over torqued one, is the first thing I do is I get a pair of big vice grip pliers and I clamp them down on what's left of the oil drain plug. Now, I use vice grip pliers. But instead of a little round tightener, I bought the special hex one that screws in. Then I can get a wrench and I can tighten it super tight. Then I get another wrench and put it on the side of the whole assembly. I pull it loose. It will always come out then. Push comes to shove. I actually have one of those slide hammers. Well, the slide hammer will screw into that hex one that I put on mine. And with it on like that, I can hit the slide hammer. It will pull it out. Then you can get an oversized drain plug to put back in. I've done that many times, places like AutoZone sell them. But make them do it or make them put a new oil pan on if they screwed up. It's their problem. They messed it up. Or take it somewhere else where somebody else will fix it and give them the bill. Tim P says, why does a dipstick read different on both sides? I hate that. Yeah, so do I. But it's just because it's the design of engines and where the dipstick tube goes in that one side gets directly on the oil and the other side doesn't a lot of times it gets scraped out when you pull out what you want to do is go by the higher reading the higher reading is the correct one the lower one is because somebody scraped it off it's scraped off or it's not sitting correctly on one side you always take the higher reading when you get two different readings odds are it scraped it off when you pulled it off because of the design of it nothing's perfect when I was a kid they read the same on both sides because they were a pretty big hole that went far enough from the edge they didn't wipe and you just pulled up and both sides would be the same but yeah the engineers have kind of made them cheaper so go by the higher reading Willard McKissick says Scotty what's more important to look at when buying a used truck miles or years well generally it's miles things wear out over miles the important things wear over miles yeah tires rot as they get old but that's the cheap part the engine and the transmission wear out from age and mileage and that's where the big money is so it's generally the mileage that's more important you got to understand each vehicle some cars the older cars are better than the newer cars so like if you were gonna get a Chevy pickup truck if you could get a 2000 it might be a great pickup regardless of the mileage but if you were getting like a 2015 used it's not as well made it might be better just go with the old one regardless of the miles <laughs> You got to understand the overall picture of a vehicle. Philip Macy says, Scotty, should I buy a used Tesla or buy Bitcoin and walk? Well, I wouldn't buy Bitcoin. I think it's ready for a fall, but you could save your money wherever you want and take an Uber. <laughs> but I mean, you never know how cheap you can get a Tesla used. I, I had a customer that he bought a $126,000 one for only 45 when it had 15,000 miles. And I've seen people buy Model 3s used even cheaper than that. $8,000, $7,000. If you can get one cheap enough and it works, Hey, why not? You know, you waste your money buying a new one, but they've got horrendous resale value. But then again, you could get like a Nissan Leaf really cheap too, and it's going to last and be a lot cheaper to repair in the long run because there's people out there that know how to work on them. But with the Teslas, I can't get any information. My all data data system does not include Tesla. Tesla will not give that information out to the aftermarket. So you're stuck with going to them to get it fixed, and they're going to take you to the cleaners. Born to drive, so Scotty, what's better? A late model Subaru Outback CVT or a Hyundai Santa Fe I'd say the Outback I am not that big of a CVT fan but they're making them better than they used to and the Hyundai's they're okay when they're new but when they age they fall apart more I got a lot of customers with Subarus that have over 200,000 miles on them very few with Hyundai's Subarus will last over time if you pick the right one don't buy a six-cylinder Subaru those engines have problems the four-cylinder engines the late model ones they don't have problems that said the Subaru will outlast a Hyundai 
as long as you're not getting into the fancy ones with the six cylinder engines that have problems and then the sixes have so much power they burn out the transmissions too so stay away from the six cylinder Subarus Fugazi 500 says tell us about catch can okay oil catch cans the reason that people put them in is because when they started doing this GDI gasoline cars GDI's gasoline direct injection the fuel injectors instead of spraying gas in the intake manifold which is sucked over the intake valves when they suck the air fuel mixture in and that cleans the valves with GDI the injectors spray fuel directly into the cylinders so nothing is cleaning the intake valves which would be okay in itself except modern cars have PCV valves and that vents the oil vapors from the engine and burns them well they get sucked in the intake and then those deposits will get on the intake valves and clog them up Volkswagens have big problems with that so with an oil catch can what happens is that's added to the PCV system so the oil gets stuck in the oil catch can and only the vapors come through so you don't have that problem and a lot of people add them on some of the new ones don't need them like the Toyotas both GDI injectors and regular fuel injectors on the intake manifold it's a dual system so they won't carbon up and you don't need one but on an old Volkswagen you would need one because it was a bad design and they get so much build up I've seen them this thick you got to take them apart and then you got to get a sandblasting machine but you can't blast them with sand and ruin the head you put crushed walnuts and then you blast Blast them with crushed walnuts, but that's what the cans are for, is to prevent that. Ramo the fan says, Should I drain my transmission and fill with a cold engine or hot? All right, in that case, you want to have it hot. The main reason you don't change your engine oil when it's hot is because the engine's all hot and everything, and you might burn yourself, right? Well, the transmissions, they don't get as hot as the engine oil, and you want it to be hot. Yeah, you know, maybe drive it 15, 20 minutes because then it flows better and more will drain out. That's the main reason that you'd want to get the transmission warm. You'll get more of it out that way. And it doesn't get as hot as the engine oil, so you're not really going to hurt yourself. Tony Gammon says, I got no former Mercedes Z500. When I scanned it, it showed the transmission ran sensors going bad, but the car shifts fine. Yeah, leave it alone on the transmission. Maybe it's got a little bad signal. As long as it starts and runs and rides, okay, who cares? When you price out what those things cost on the Mercedes Benz and you got to reprogram the computer to accept it, it's a bunch of money. As those Mercedes ages, you're going to get all kinds of codes. Every time somebody I know is buying a used one, I say, watch this. I'm going to hook it up. Sometimes I find 57 separate trouble codes on those things. But the cars run okay because they got so many computer modules. Some have close to 100 separate computer modules. And as they age, they get wacky. As long as it runs okay. Don't worry about it. These truths. I have an 05 Dodge Ram 2500, 5.9 Cummings automatic transmission, low mileage for sale. 196000 for $14,000 or best offer. You see what you can get for it, but you've got a good one. I don't know why you want to sell it, but if you want to sell it, see what you can get for it. And especially since Peugeot, who knows? They make diesel engines too. Maybe they'll start putting French diesel engines in them. I have no idea what those knuckleheads are going to do next. If I were you, I'd keep the thing. You'll never get another one like that. They'll never make them. Jesse Ho says, How long do clutches last? I got a 170,000 miles on an original Civic. Depends on how you drive. <laughs> I had a customer back in Houston. He'd eat the clutches out in his Honda every 20,000 miles, but he was doing burnouts. He drove like a maniac. He was always downshifting. If you're conservative, I had a customer with a Honda Civic that had 220,000 and still had the original clutch because they were conservative drivers. You drive conservatively, they're going to last longer. And a car like a Civic, they generally can last longer because it's a small car. It's light. There's less weight that it's pulling. Where you get some fool in a Dodge Hellcat that's got 700 something horsepower and they're doing burnouts they're going to burn it out from all the weight and strain and power. Nathaniel Christensen says Scotty what's your opinion on GM's quadrasteer system from the early 2000s? I had a Silverado 1500 HD for about a year and I absolutely love it. Yes when they work they are a great system. You got four wheel steering so a big truck you can go parallel parking easier you get more control but it's a very complex system and it's computer driven. If it breaks it costs you a small fortune to repair it. Even before that, the first big one that I know of was Honda put it on some of their cars and they really did handle well and park. The Hondas were really well made in that they were set one way that you could parallel park easier, but then at higher speeds, they turned the opposite direction for high speed corners. When they broke, man, they cost a fortune to fix. Most of my customers that had them, they would just have them disconnected on the back because they didn't want to spend thousands fixing them when they finally broke. It's a great engineering idea when it works, but if it breaks, then you gonna wish it didn't have it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.